Hello fans of Agile Coding. In this video I'm going to show you Spring Retry. The idea is yeah, shown here on this picture. Um, we are building a Spring Boot application running on a server or a Docker container and we are called by our user here shown with this black notebook and um, it our Spring Boot application might interact with a database or it might interact with another system, which could be a microservice, which could be a REST API. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the idea is if we are having one of those interactions and one of those interactions is failing, maybe due to the fact that this server is currently doing a restart and just not available for some seconds. In that case, we are going to introduce a retry so we call it once, it fails, and then we try it a second time. And that is something you can build with Spring Retry just by configuration. So I will switch to the code now and show you how it works. I will present the code based on a unit test. Here I have a Spring Boot test, which starts my whole Spring application. And then I have um, one service to test, which will implement a retry, that is the pet service. And I will have a mock bean, which is a pet store web client. The pet store web client is just a wrapper around a web client. And here I'm simulating that this yeah, API request is, is failing and we are getting an unexpected exception. And with spring retry, we want to retry and, and handle this exception. Yeah. Um, so the pet service is using this pet store web client and I will call this method read pets and that is the method where we need to retry. Yeah, It doesn't matter what the code here is, it could be a database interaction, it could be a REST API call as it is here. The idea is to yeah, retry the execution of the whole method with spring retry based on annotations. And in order to configure and that these annotations we need uh, Maven configuration, which is prepared for, prepared for that. So here I have a simple Spring Boot project um, based on the latest version 3.1.2. And um, it doesn't matter which kind of application it is. It could be Spring Web Flux as here. It could be Spring Web. It could be anything else. What you need to add retry to your application is you need spring retry and you need spring aspects. Yeah? So those two things are required so that the things are working. And um, yeah, so let me start by executing my unit test. The unit test is starting the spring application and then it's configuring a mock. Um, yeah, the mock is simulating the behavior of the interaction with the API. And here we are simulating that we are getting first a bad request 502 wrapped in an exception. And then we are getting the result, which is a string which contains pets here, a dog, a cat, and a mouse, but that doesn't matter. It's just a string. And uh, yeah, then I test in my unit test that this is as expected, that we really get the expected string by calling this method read pets, which is retried. And we ensure that we have two interactions with the mocks, the first one which fails and the second one which is a retry and that has to be successful. Yeah, so currently the unit test fails as expected with a 502 error bad gateway. So that is as expected. And now I'm going to add the retry capability to my code. So here I have to add an annotation called, oh, sorry, retryable. And in my Spring configuration, which can be the Spring Boot application annotated class, um, here I'm enabling the retry feature, just like this by annotation. And if I re-execute my unit test now, Spring retry will do the job. It will re-execute um, the method because it failed the first time due to this exception and the second time it is successful. So let's have a look at the logs. Here we see it also like this. Yeah, here we have this debug log entry trying request. We have it once and we have it twice and this is a retry. And since the retry was successful, we didn't get an exception. 
So we continued with our code. Um, so here we continued with the code. We checked that the expected string is returned and that we checked that we have two interactions with our mocks. So that was working. So let's add one more test. Here's the idea now that I have two exceptions. So the um, REST API, which we are calling, does not work. And here in this case, I want to stop after the first retry and I want to see a recover value. So this unit test will fail if I execute it. You will see it here on the left side. So let's switch to um, the code and add some more logic to get it working. First of all, we need a recover value returned. That is this one. So um, I can do this by creating a method, which is returning a string because the recover value is a string. And I call the method recovery. And it's just returning this string. Yeah, you could do here some more logic if uh, that is needed for your use case. Um, and one more thing here, yeah, this application will retry uh, some kind of default configured um, um, times. And I think it's, it's three. Let's check it. It's max attempts and the documentation says if there is no other value defined, it is three. And I just want to have two tries. Yeah, here you can see default is three and I configure it to two. So we have a first try and then one retry. Um, and something else I want to show you also, which is important, you can define a back off. Um, a back off is defined by another annotation back off. And here you can define details about the time which should be passed during a failed request and a retry. So I can define here um, delay. So I will have now a delay of um, one second. Yeah, so we will see that the first test will be slower because it waits longer until it does the retry. So let's re-execute it and see that the second test passes now and that um, the time between the locks has increased uh, to at least one second. Yeah, because back off means I wait at least for a delay of one second. Yeah. Um, okay. So. The first try was locked here and we waited one second. You see 28 and 29, though that was a waiting time of one second, which can be configured like this. You can configure more like a max delay and, and other things. Um, yeah, check this out to, to get more um, details. It's, it's pretty simple to understand. And uh, somehow my test failed because I forgot got the add recover annotation. Yeah, so it's not enough to check just this um, method. You need also to give it an annotation called recover. And that means in case that both retries failed with an exception, we are returning the um, result of the method which has the add recover annotation. Yeah, so that is what we need. And now we will have two tests passing for the next test, I will reduce the delay to uh, 300 milliseconds to speed things up. Yeah, you see now both tests passed. Um, okay, so let's continue with test number three. Here I want to show in the case that we have an illegal state, I don't want to have a retry. So here in this case, yeah, we did something which cannot be saved yeah a retry doesn't make sense so we skip it so in case we have an illegal state exception no retry so let's do this also here in this annotation you can say no retry for illegal state exception class and then we just re-execute the tests now and then we will see that this is also working i will also enable the test number four directly to save a little bit of time. And you see also that this test number four is failing. <laughs> that will be the next topic. So let's see no retry if that's working now. Yeah, no retry passed because we got an illegal state exception. Then we didn't have a second interaction um, with our mock that's checked here. 
but we still get the recover value. And now in the last test, I want to check that we don't get the recover value in case if we have an illegal argument exception. Yeah? So this is some kind of, we are calling another API. We are doing, for example, a bad request. So yeah, that is something which should be presented to us so that we can fix it and not be hidden behind um, a default value or a recover value. So here we want to our application and the request to fail, and then we fix it by adapting the code that we, so that we don't send illegal arguments to other APIs. So that's what I'm simulating here. And we can do this also by annotation. We just say no recoverable, and that is this class. So let's re-execute the unit test and see that all tests are green. And that is then already the end of my presentation. Yeah, you see um, how you can add Spring retry to your Spring application and how you can ensure that um, yeah, your interactions with databases, other APIs and so on is more robust and in case of some kind of hiccups, it's, it's retrying so that it works. If you liked my video, please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel to be up to date with new content. See you next time.